Welcome back, you crazy, crazy sons of bitches. This is Rob's Rifle Rants. Uh, what everybody's been saying is the swaggiest gun channel on the internet. Who am I to disagree with them? Today we're going to be getting down and dirty. <laughs> Today we're going to be getting down and filthy with uh, a cool subject about making some dope ass dope cards. This is kind of a subject we would teach the DMs because there's a lot of resources right now. You can get so many different apps on your phone um, with ballistic calculators to, to get some dope cards for your gun. So you guys out there with DM builds or SPR builds and things like that, this is going to help you really dial down your hold so you can be accurate out to range. All right. Cause I know a lot of guys, you know, they build a cool DM setup. I'm like, oh, dude, that's sick. You know, uh, you got your, you got your data so you can actually shoot this thing far. And they're like, no, I don't know how to do that. So um, I wanted to make this video to, to really just make you a little bit more lethal um, with that precision setup, whether it's a recce setup or whatever the case. So I'm going to be breaking down my Kestrel a little bit, you know, like the capabilities of that. And then a lot of good free options that you can just get on your phone. Full disclosure, I'm going to be throwing some brands out there. I have zero sponsorships. Nobody really knows I exist. So I'm not going to give you any biased information. I've just, I'm just going to recommend what I've used and what I've personally liked and then what might be best for you. So if you want to do some DM shit, you want to do some sniper shit, one of the first steps is getting good data for your gun, all right, just to help you suck a little bit less. We're about to go ahead and hit the intro. Before we do, if you could please hit that like and subscribe button. That's really going to help me and my starving three kids that I have upstairs. I'm just kidding. I don't have any kids. But... It really is going to help my channel out. Uh, if you hit that like and subscribe button, maybe even leave a comment. I don't care what you say. Say something stupid. Say something funny. Make me, make me chuckle a little bit. Without further ado, though, let's get into it. Okay, so what is a ballistic calculator? Basically, it takes all your atmospheric information and your gun profile and what uh, projectile you're shooting and Hulk smashes that stuff together to give you a good firing solution. So your elevation setting and your windage and things like that. My experience with ballistic calculators has primarily been on the Kestrels. Uh, so this is a Kestrel 5700. Um, and this is basically a weather meter that made sweet, beautiful love with a ballistic calculator. Oh, him and her got it on. Woo-wee! And gave us this little bundle of joy. Okay, so um, you can see up top, I got my wind impeller to get my wind speed. Um, I got a sensor right here and then some sensors on the back. And that's just going to collect all that atmospheric information, which I'll go over the variables you'll need to gather a little bit later. Um, takes all that information and mine is paired up with the software Applied Ballistics, um, which was created by Brian Litz. If you don't know who Brian Litz is, he's basically like a ballistic robot. Um, and he's a freaking genius. He's got a lot of good books out there. They're just called Applied Ballistics books. Uh, I'm not going to lie. They're a pretty dry read. They're really, they're really sciencey. You know, they're no uh, magic tree house. You know what I mean? But um, they are interesting nonetheless. They got a lot of good information. It usually takes me a couple reads over the page to, to really get it to stick, but there's a lot of good information in there. So I recommend giving those a read if you, if you got the time and you want to get nerdy enough. So, But these are widely used by military snipers and things like that, um, and they're awesome. Now, the caveat to this is that they are not very cheap, okay? Okay. Um, but luckily for us, there are a lot of free applications that are available now uh, that you can just download on your phone. The only caveat to getting the application is that you'll have to look up all those atmospheric variables to plug in 
rather than having it all in one device. Another option is Kestrel makes a just stand standalone weather meter that gathers all that atm atmospheric information. Um, so you can get one of those, pair it up with your phone, bada bing, bada boom, you got a Kestrel, okay? So I'm gonna spit out some free apps for you guys. So the one that I've used personally the most is the Hornady Fordoff app. It's a very intuitive app. Um, maybe I'll show some like screenshots of it to, to show you kind of how it works. Um, Lapua Ballistics I've heard is really good. Straylock Ballistics Calculator um, is another good one. Applied Ballistics also has their own application. So um, there's a ton of them out there these days that are free. Um, those are just some specific ones that I've kind of personally checked out. One thing you got to keep in mind with these apps is a lot of them, you know, are paired up with certain certain manufacturers, right? So the Horny app, uh, the Hornady app is obviously going to be uh, better suited for Hornady bullets. You know what I mean? It's already going to have all that data kind of built into the software. Applied Ballistics, Brian Litz kind of works with Berger. Um, if you already got a brand that you really like, I mean, you shoot a lot of their bullets, maybe it might be in your best interest to go ahead and check out their app and see if you like it. Um, that way you have all that data already uploaded into the software. One of the biggest things to know about ballistic calculators is you're going to get out what you put in. So if you put in shit, you're going to get shit sprayed back out all over your chest. Oh, that's nasty. But yeah, so if you put in all the right variables, you're going to get the right answer out. If you put in the wrong variables, you're going to get the wrong answer out. Okay, so so I'm going to be going over some of those variables to make sure you guys are setting up your ballistic calculator correctly. Okay, so so first thing I'm going to go over is how to set up your gun profile. If the application is not having you set up a gun profile, it's probably going to give you bad data. First thing you're going to need to know, rate of twist. You don't know what rate of twist is. It's basically how tight your rifling is in your barrel. So for example, I'm shooting 6.5 Creedmoor out of mine and I have a one and eight twist. So for every eight inches of my barrel, my bullet is rotating one complete time. And that mine is a right-handed twist. Um, most barrels are right-handed twist, but there are some that are left-handed and what this is gonna affect is your spin drift, okay? So your bullet kind of tends to start drifting the way that it's spinning, okay? Um, most of the time, this is stamped right on your barrel, so just go check that out. Next thing you're gonna wanna know is your bore height, also known as scope height. Um, this is a measurement from the center of your bore to the center of your optic. One way to measure this is to just pull your bolt out a little bit uh, to where it's kind of flush with the back of your optic, with your ocular lens, and then just grab a tape measure, kind of eyeball half of that bolt, and then pull it up, eyeball half of your scope, um, and measure it that way. It doesn't have to, you don't have to get out the calipers and get some scientific uh, measurement or anything like that. As long as you're pretty close, it's not gonna throw your shot off, you know, hardly at all, hardly noticeable. You're gonna need to know what distance you zeroed at, obviously. You're gonna need to know uh, your bullet weight and bullet diameter as well. Something else you guys are gonna need to know, and this is kind of be, gonna be the hardest to grasp uh, concept probably. All right, but I'll try to break it down um, and really simplify it a little bit. Okay, so depending on your software you're using, if you're using a software like Applied Ballistics, you're gonna to need to know your ballistic coefficient and your drag model that you wanna use. All right, so what is ballistic coefficient or BC? Basically, it's a number that represents how effectively your bullet battles drag or air resistance. So these numbers are produced by comparing them to a drag model. The two main drag models that you have are a G1 and a G7. You might see these on some ammo boxes sometime. Okay, so G1 is kind of the old standard projectile, all right? It looks more like a pistol round, all right? Not very aerodynamic. So what you're gonna to wanna to focus on is your G7. That G7 drag model is more comparative to a precision round, right? You got your boat tail, it's a, it's a good shape to go off of. So just disregard the G1. Side note, a lot of ammo manufacturers will just have the G1 on the box as a marketing scheme because it's a higher number, okay? So just disregard that, throw it out the window. Get the fuck out of here. All right, so you wanna find that G7. If it's not on your box, try to Google it, try to look it up um, in some form or fashion. Worst case scenario, you can use the G1 model. Just make sure you're typing that drag model 
into your ballistic calculator. Okay, but if you can find the G7, make sure your drag model says G7, and then you type that funky number next to it down in your ballistic coefficient. Now, a lot of softwares these days already have drag curves uploaded into the software itself. These are called custom drag curves. All right, so it's got the exact bullet weight dimensions and they've collected data on it. So all you need to do is select that, at which point your ballistic coefficient would be one because that is your drag curve. Okay, so I'll try to show, I'm shooting 140 grain um, ELD match um, from Hornady. And this is what my uh, drag model in BC looks like in my Kestrel. Okay, hopefully the camera is focusing. I have no idea because I cannot see the screen. <laughs> All right. But, All right, so hopefully that kind of uh, clarifies ballistic coefficient and drag model a little bit. Um, all right, so if you want to get into the weeds of that, again, those applied ballistics books, you get after it. Um, something else you're going to need to know is your muzzle velocity. Now, I know a lot of guys uh, don't have a chronograph or a lab radar to get their muzzle velocities. So one way to get around this, just go ahead and look at the muzzle velocity on the box if it says it. If not, try to look it up. Try to see if anybody else got, has gotten muzzle velocities from it before and use a roundabout number there. And then you're gonna to need to actually go out and friggin' shoot and then see if those muzzle velocities are correct. So whenever you put in all that information, it's gonna give you your elevation setting. Go out and try it out at that range. If you're not hitting center, you need to record what elevation you need to hit center. And then you need to adjust your muzzle velocity so it reflects that elevation setting for that range if that makes sense. Um, and then as you go further out, you can keep doing that. It's, it's kind of like truing your muzzle velocity up. And then once you get out to transonic range, that's where you can really true your muzzle velocity. And that's kind of a whole nother topic in itself. Okay. So, uh, trying to hit the wave tops to get, to get you guys going. Once you've typed in all that information, you should be good on your gun profile. Now let's talk about atmospherics a little bit. Um, so there's a few, variables you're definitely going to want to record go ahead and record temperature station pressure altitude and humidity okay and all these will combine into the most important variable which is density altitude density altitude doesn't really necessarily reflect your actual altitude or anything like that it's a combination of variables but it most greatly affects your data okay so if you don't record any of those other variables make sure you look up density altitude so luckily for us, a lot of uh, airports actually record this because it affects how freaking planes fly through the freaking sky. Okay, so uh, look, look up your local airport report um, and things like that and try to record that density altitude. So you're gonna wanna plug all that stuff into your ballistic calculator. So one thing, if you're using an application like Hornady Ford off, or you're utilizing another application that utilizes degrees of freedom instead of ballistic coefficient, it's gonna ask you to record your axial form factor. And this is something that you measure while you're downrange, okay? So um, look up Hornady's video on that. They got a, they got a good video on describing it. Um, I, the other day, I typed in all the same information from my applied ballistics Kestrel into the Hornady app, and I left my axial form factor on one. I just didn't mess with it. I never measured it while I was out there. And um, by the time I got out to a thousand yards, it was saying about, about a 0.3 mil difference. Okay, so at those closer ranges, you know, it's probably not gonna be that big of a difference. Um, once you get to, once you, if you really want to shoot further out, uh, you're really gonna start seeing some deviations in those. Okay, so if you measure your actual form factor out, it's just gonna make you that much more accurate. All right, so before you guys start recording your elevation settings and things like that, I want you to go ahead and zero out your windage. Um, and the reason I'm telling you to do that is because once you have a crosswind uh, interacting with a spinning bullet, you can get some deviations in your elevation settings, okay? So that is called aerodynamic jump. Don't really need to worry about that variable too much right now, okay? So just go ahead and zero out your windage before and you don't have to worry about it. And then basically how I have my little dope card right here, this table was just made in Microsoft Word. Just make a little table and I do increments of about 50 yards or 50 meters, depending 
I'll record my density altitude on the card that I'm using. Um, you know, if you kind of just want a standard card, maybe try to get the average density altitude in your area that you're shooting and record those dopes. That way you always have something to reference um, that'll get you pretty damn close to on target. And I've weatherproofed this guy, which I just laminated it, or you can use, you know, just tape um, and that'll work. You can tape it to your butt stock. You can keep it in your kit. I like to wear uh, like a football sleeve or something like that. Um, just keep some different little cards in there. And that's gonna make you a lot more effective, all right? Just having those dopes on you at all time. Um, so no matter what range you're looking at, you can just look down and you know how to ac accurately engage that target, okay? So, so I think these are crucial if you wanna get the most out of your gun. If you're using a BDC, you can really iron down those holds, but you're gonna need to look up your reticle breakdown, okay? so. What I would do, look up your uh, reticle breakdown and then find those measurements, okay? Whether mills or MOA, and then match those measurements up with whatever data that your ballistic calculator is spitting out. And that's gonna give you your no shit accurate holds, okay? Cause a lot of these are just standard for 5.56 five, or 7.62, um, but you can really iron down that BDC um, with, a, with a ballistic calculator that way. Okay, so pretty cool. And that's pretty much the basics of it, guys. Uh, these things are capable of a ton and I can talk about them until your face just melts directly off your skull. You know, we can get into the weeds of spin drift, aerodynamic jump, everybody's favorite uh, Coriolis effect. Thank you, Mark Wahlberg from Shooter for that one. Everything comes into play that far. Humidity, elevation, temperature, wind, spin drift. There's a six to 10 second flight time, so you have to shoot it where the target's going to be. Even the Coriolis effect. Coriolis effect. Coriolis effect. And there's a lot of cool stuff you can learn by shooting with a ballistic calculator, kind of doing like back math and things like that. So if you want any more information, just send it down in the comments. Maybe I can get into the weeds of it eventually. Um, and that's all I got guys. But, but thanks for stopping in and watch me run my suck hole about this topic. And I hope to see you guys next time. So uh, party on and keep it real as Shaggy would say.